Hi, I'm Kressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, we'll be doing the boring operation of the headstock for the lathe project I'm making. The first step in the boring operation was preparation of the boring bar. I mounted a center drill in the tool post of the carriage and I used the carriage with the center drill to bore a hole into the boring bar. And then I used a twist drill to enlarge that hole. And the purpose of the hole is uh, twofold. First, it serves as a, a fixture for the drill bit that allows me to indicate on the headstock where that hole needs to be located, but it also serves as a hole that I can tap later to fixture the cutting bit for the boring operation. I just super glued the twist drill into the boring bar and that allowed me to drill a hole into the headstock. I didn't follow the book exactly. Uh, the book calls for uh, the pattern for the headstock to have a little, a semicircular cylinder uh, removed from the top part of the headstock. I didn't do that, so I had to remove quite a bit of material. I used a 5 8 spade bit to drill through the headstock initially. It turns out that a 5 8 inch hole that isn't perfectly aligned with a 5 8 inch boring bar has some interference issues. So I uh, ended up having to take a Dremel tool to it to enlarge that hole. Once I had the clearance through the left side of the headstock, I was able to drill a hole in the right side of the headstock. Then I took that over to the drill press and I used a bigger spade bit to cut that hole. Uh, that worked out a lot better. Next, I had mounted a tap into the carriage uh, tool post and I use that to tap the hole in the boring bar and I had to use a pair of vice grips to keep that tap from rotating in the tool post. After I had that hole tapped I needed to drill the hole in the boring bar for the bit that I used to cut the hole during the boring operation. I needed to have two flat parallel sides to the boring bar and so I just took my Dremel tool and I pretty much drug it along the top of the boring bar and then I indexed that side with the pulleys and that way I could rotate it 180 degrees and make sure that those sides are roughly parallel. Then I took it over to the drill press. Fixturing the boring bar on the drill press for drilling that hole was a little bit challenging. I've got this piece that I welded together. It's angle iron and that allows the boring bar to kind of sit down in there. And I used like F clamps, some extra angle iron, some C clamps, a piece of wood and held it in there well enough that I could do the drilling. The center drilled it. I used a increasingly large diameters of drill bits to get it up to one quarter inch drill bit. And then I took it over to the vise and I used a three corner triangular file to turn that round hole into a square hole. And then I used a, some flat files to kind of clean it up. Uh, but I eventually got it to where the lathe tool that I was gonna be using as the cutter would fit in there pretty easily. I cut off the lathe tool with a hacksaw and used a set screw at the end of the boring bar to secure it and I roughly gauged the depth of that cutter and took a first pass at the boring operation. And the nice thing about a lathe is that it kind of builds itself. The cutter uh, that's cutting roughly a circular path as you move the headstock along the bed, that circular path passes along the entire length of the headstock. So that hole is perfectly parallel with the lathe bed, or at least as close as I need it to be. During that initial cut, I was getting a little bit of chatter, and what I chalked it up to was the fact that the cutting face of the lathe bed is actually offset a little bit 
about an eighth of an inch in front of the center line of the boring bar. And what that results in is essentially a negative rake to the cutting tip. And that's not really desirable for aluminum, so I decided to try and grind my own tool bit. I used the offcut from the lathe tool. I ground it down. Once I got that into the boring bar, you can see that it's much closer to the center line. I was shooting for a little bit of positive rake. After I had the cutter ground to where I felt comfortable with it, I had to make a gauge adjustment tool for setting the depth of that cutter. And essentially what it is is a piece of steel that wraps around the boring bar and it's got three screws on it. Two of them allow you to clamp down on the bar and the third screw allows you to tighten down onto a feeler gauge that you insert between the cutter and this screw and when you get it dialed in that gives you the ability to loosen the set screw, push the cutter out until it makes contact with that screw tighten up the set screw, and you can remove the tool. This gauging tool gives you the ability to make small adjustments to the radius of your cut. I made this gauge out of 3 8 inch key stock for the long piece, and the band is made out of 1 8 inch by 1 inch cold rolled steel, and that's hard to bend. Uh, I tried heat heating it up, and I didn't have the setup to, to do that properly, so I ended up just brute forcing it and uh, kind of using a combination of different things I had around in the shop to essentially bend this piece around uh, the boring bar. And I used that boring bar as kind of a mandrel to achieve this shape. Once I got it roughly bent into shape with the vise, I put the key stock in to the band roughly positioned it and instead of fighting with drilling this and tapping it uh, for some screws I ended up just welding that and uh, I just pretty much tacked it in four places and it seemed to hold pretty well. Before I got too far into the boring operation I had to fabricate some shims. The shims offset the bearing caps and give you the ability to remove them later to tighten down on the bearings. You may recall from the previous video the larger bearing cap had a little bit of shrinkage from the casting and I didn't get rid of that because I knew that there was going to be a hole through that part. However, it turns out that shrink void extends far enough into the sides of the bearing cap that I think it added uh, to the chatter during the boring operation and it also provided a little recess that just collected the swarf from the cutter. <laughs> during the uh, boring operation I, I tried to speed it up by hooking up this hose to the end of the lead screw and I used my drill to kind of quickly advance it. That didn't really actually work out that well because the whole time I was, <laughs> I was frightened that I would run the headstock into something. So after playing around with that a little bit, I ended up just running it by hand for the rest of the operation. So I advanced the cutter by like 10 thousandths uh, in radius, all the way from slightly over 5 eighths of an inch to 3 quarters of an inch. And then I test fit one of the bronze bushings that I had purchased, continued on up to approximately 1 inch diameter, where I test fit one of the steel bearings that go around the bronze bearings. The steel bearing fit was a little bit tight, but that's a story for another time. In the next video, I'll be going into some detail about the bearings for the headstock. I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you liked the video, click the like button. Subscribe to Maker Size, check out some of the other videos, and we'll see you next time.